Hello. So I'm going to start this off by saying I had a thought. I know, right? I struggle really badly with my intros and I'm wondering if I need to just have an intro that is something that I say every time. I've seen it done by some other creators and I think maybe it might be the go for me. So if you've got any ideas or suggestions of what my intro could be, let me know in the comments. So now that we've got that out of the way, today I'm working on something that I've been putting off for ages because I have no idea what I'm doing. So, this is a chair obviously and my lovely neighbor who is no longer my neighbor um, she asked me one day if I could reupholster a chair for her friend and I asked her to send me a photo of the chair so I could tell her yes or no and instead of a photo I got the chair anyway moving on so I've been putting it off, like I said, because this is a daunting task. It is in horrible condition. The underside I haven't even had a proper look at, but it is, uh, yeah, kind of nasty. Uh, but I said I'd do it and it's been ages because I've been putting it off for so long. So I'm just going to try and get it done. So as a disclaimer, I did say to her and she has told her friend that I've not done something like this before. I've reupholstered chairs, but they've just been dining chairs where I can just take the seat off, recover it, and then put it back on, which is really simple and anyone can do it. Uh, I've never done anything like this. I've told her that it's not gonna be the exact same style as it is now with all of the fancy little details and stuff, and she is more than okay with that, which is good, because I can't do fancy. Not with this stuff, I'm, you know, this is going to be a learning process. Um, she did give me fabric to use for it, so I don't have to go out and pick out fabric for it. It's just a grey fabric. It's actually really soft. I don't know what kind of fabric it is, but um, yeah, it's really nice. So hopefully I don't bugger it up too much. So I guess I better stop procrastinating and get started on it. Also, I'm not going to be giving any instructions in this. I'm just going to do a lot of time lapsing and I'm going to be saying what I'm doing and that's it. This isn't going to be an instructional video because I don't know what I'm doing. So, just taking you along for the journey and I hope you enjoy. So the first thing I'm doing today is taking off my lovely earrings and putting on my respirator. This thing is absolutely disgusting, dusty and has mouse poop in it and I'm not taking the risk of inhaling any of that crap. So checking the suction to make sure it's got a nice firm fit, getting really uncomfortable because of my glasses and then chucking on my headphones because I'm going to try and leave the sound in as much as I can. Okay, so initially I was going to try and keep the fabric intact to make a template for the new fabric, but that just didn't work out because no matter how careful I was with it, the fabric was just tearing around the rusty nails. And then I opted for just ripping that sucker off. Yes, I could have just used my hands to rip the fabric off, but because there's little nails everywhere, um, I opted for using pliers. Uh, it also helps get a better grip on the fabric to rip it off if you're using pliers.
I've got it all stripped back and cleaned off all the nails and stuff like that. Um, this is, as you can see, dipped down really badly and that's because there's springs underneath held up by straps. I, I don't understand the thought process between about um, hessian straps holding up strong springs. But anyway, I'm not going to bother trying to fix that. Um, so stuff like this, the padding in old pieces like this is made up of like old wool and cotton and you know bits of fabric like you can see here a piece of fabric and it's all just shredded and used for padding so rather than going out and buying new padding I've got a bag of t-shirts and jumpers and stuff here that was given to me by Angela and I'm going to shred some of this up as much as I can to use as filling. Obviously I've left this fabric on here because I think if I took this off the stuffing would fall off and it would lose that shape. This way if I keep this on I can follow the shape of this and it'll be nice and firm and it won't fall apart. Alright so the piece I had in that last shot was too small and I ended up cutting a bigger piece for it. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm working off of that crease in the middle of the back of it being the centerline and I'm folding the piece of fabric down the center 
and I'm going to start from the middle and work my way out. So that the fabric sticks to the curves and holds it in place nicely, I'm using Sally's Quick Grip Spray. Um, this is stuff, something I don't normally use, but I had it left over from when I replaced the headliner in my car. And it worked well for that. It's smelly stuff. I probably should have worn the mask while using it, but it worked really well. So just poking it down into the grooves and spraying it on the curves getting the fabric nice and smooth on that curve and then poking down into the next one as I go. Holy guys, I did it. <laughs> this is the part I was most dreading. Um, but I think I did all right, considering I've never done anything like this before. It's not perfect by any means, but you know what? I'm pretty much doing this for free. So you get what you pay for, to be honest. Um, I, to take something like this to an upholsterer would have cost hundreds and hundreds of dollars and you know it is what it is Alright, so this is what we've got so far. We're just gonna ignore these little things. Like I said several times, it's not gonna be perfect. Um, so I was gonna try and avoid doing the ruffle around here because there's nowhere in these openings to attach it to with the staple gun. Um, and I was trying to avoid sewing because I'm terrible at it. I used to be good at it, but I suck at it now. 
or maybe I'm just not interested in sewing, who knows. Um, but I can't really avoid it and I think doing anything other than the ruffle on the bottom part is probably going to look crap. So this bad boy's going home with me where you are going to witness the embarrassment that is my little sewing machine. I don't even know if you would call it a sewing machine, but that is what's happening. All right, so that is not what happened at all. It is the next day and I opted to not take it home with me because if I took it home, I would have spent the entire night working on it and not got any rest at all. So instead, I brought my sewing machine down here with me. Hang on, let me grab it. Hang on. That's embarrassing. So I brought this for a project ages ago that I was going to do for some um, beach chairs that I wanted to redo the fabric for and they are still sitting under my house untouched and I'm not even sure where I found this. I, I can't remember. Oh, hang on. It's from Audi. I think I paid $25 for it from Audi. It might have been $12 or something. It was ridiculously cheap and fit my budget. So, gonna have a go using this to do this chair. So the one thing I will say here is that using a sewing machine wearing steel cap boots was not easy, <laughs> but I got it done. The um, stitches on this were horrible, but it just held the pleats together enough for me to get the job done. As you can tell at this point, I really wasn't happy with how it was sitting, so I worked on it some more. Alright, so I didn't show it here, but to deal with the feet on this chair, I cut in towards them and kind of tucked the fabric under and then stapled it around the feet. And to kind of cover it up a bit, I opted to just paint them using Cartamilli Wool Shed. It's close enough to the colour without having to mix a custom colour and it'll look better than what it does now. So this is what has been achieved today. Wasn't exactly the look I was going for with it, but I think it works and um, yeah, it looks better than what it did with the thingy, the skirt all loose at the bottom. As you can see, you can't see much of the feet. Uh, imagine it from higher up because it's quite a low chair. You won't, won't really see it a great deal. So I think it, it's all right considering what I had to work with and my lack of skills. So. I'm going to leave it there for now and come back tomorrow. Before I finish it off by putting the back piece on, I'm just adding some hessian strapping on the back to make sure that the fabric stays nice and firm. As you'll see here, I put another strap on going horizontal. So hopefully you can make sense of what I'm doing just 
from watching because there was a lot of back and forth, a lot of manipulation of the fabric. Um, but I basically started from the center, um, pulled it somewhat tight and got it as much to the center as possible from top to bottom. Um, held it in place with staples, went to the corners, um, did those as well, the sides. Uh, the good thing about the staples is with a staple remover they are super easy to remove so if I needed to pull anything tighter or in a different direction I just removed the staples and redid that section. The other good thing about the staples is once I've got all the staples in place and the staples hold, it, hold the fabric down nice and tight um, I then go around with thumbtacks and basically just put the thumbtacks over the top of the staples and makes it look a bit nicer and I think it holds the fabric down a bit smoother around the edges. Just in case you haven't figured it out, the turkey sounds are me singing. I put my headphones on so that I could listen to music and keep the workshop sounds for the video and then sung all the way through the last half of the video. Quick little reminder of the mess she was in before. And here she is now. Obviously, like I stated in the start, not exactly the same style she was before, but it is a massive improvement and I am super thrilled with how it's turned out considering I've never done anything like this before. Well, I'm glad that's done. Um, I'm never doing anything like that ever again. This isn't like the chairs and tables and stuff where I say I'm never going to do it again and then I end up doing it again. Really never doing anything like this again. I wasn't going to record this. I was just going to get it done and get it out of here. But I'm glad I did record it because it was a journey. Um, what did I learn from this? I learned that I can achieve anything I put my mind to and if I just shut off and get in the zone and I also learned that I can't sing. Um, I'm gonna say it again don't come at me in the comments saying what I should have done differently or anything like that for one I have said throughout the video I am not experienced at this I don't know what I'm doing um, and I let the client know as well that I don't know what I'm doing here um, and I don't need to know how to do something differently with this because I'm never doing it again. So, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you at least got a laugh out of it. And don't forget to subscribe and give it a thumbs up and comment and check the description for anything used. I think the only thing I really used was the paint. Um, but yeah. See you next time. I'm alive, everyone say You don't have a reason My heart is like a girl Sitting down like a girl We don't care, it's just not fair But you know that I know better Sitting down like a girl We don't care, it's just not fair But you know that I know better